And we're back here on Cambridge Inside Out, part two for this evening. Um, so I was um, going on perhaps maybe too long, perhaps on, um, you know, some of this gathering of city councilors where they were discussing their various goals and objectives. Um, you know, very, and there are many things that could be said here. One of the things certainly on the housing issue that I always find perplexing, and I think Councillor Toner chimed in about this issue, and I think Councillor Wilson did as well. Uh, it was that um, sometimes when you put a city survey out and you ask what's the most important issue to you, these respondents say affordable housing. But the, but the problem is, is that it, it, it needs more specificity. You know, there's the issue, does affordable mean I'd like to be able to buy a house on the market and it's just too damn expensive. I'm not going to pay two and a half million dollars for that. You know, uh, I'm, I'm going to Burlington or something. Uh, or does it mean uh, you want the, you know, when somebody says I want more affordable housing, does it mean they want more subsidized housing that's made available through city programs? Sometimes what the city does is it just presumes that that's really what it means. So they're going, you know, they pass things like affordable housing overlay and other things basically to produce subsidized housing, but that might not actually be what people were looking for. You know, and the same thing has to do with whether you want to get a um, place where it's rent subsidized versus what I, what I personally believe is really what most people mean when you, when you, um, when they say I'm concerned about affordable housing what they're concerned about is the fact that the rent's too damn high, you know, and that's really somewhat separate than the issue of whether the city is creating that housing and making it available, you know, for, based on eligibility and whether you apply to Chris Cotter down at, uh, you know, the community development department housing division, whatever, to sort of get on a list for city housing. You know, it's almost like government housing, public housing versus market housing. And if you say, I'm really concerned about the affordability of housing, are you saying that I want rents to be reasonable? Or are you saying I want the city to provide something for me? And I'm, I never really see this sort of, uh, you know, separated out uh, in a, in, with enough clarity to really understand what the people really are saying. Uh, though I have my intuitive sense about what they're saying. A uh, couple of other things that were said at this goals and objective meeting, and I thought maybe were noteworthy. Councillor Simmons, uh, in the he, she happened to notice that way down on the list of priorities was like, you know, I guess they lump them all together. The words uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and you know, she said words to the effect of, um, uh, but that should even if that's uh, way down on the list of priorities, it should be quote the lens through which we look at things unquote. And I thought, well, you know, my response to that is that's a lens through which you, you should look at things to make sure you play fair. You know, fairness counts. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to see that somehow outweigh things like, um, you know, effective delivery of services, um, you know, uh, uh, responsiveness, transparency of government. There are a lot of things that are that you could view as just basic principles for the organization of government and the delivery of services beyond just whether you're meeting somebody's notion about diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, but, you know, but it was worth saying, I think. Another people point, another counselor pointed out, maybe a couple of counselors pointed out that, you know, we actually had a city plan called the Envision Plan. But, you know, having been part of the Envision Cambridge advisory group and, and working on the housing working group myself, um, I think it, when people say, and one of the, the counselors said that, um, the Envision plan is often quoted or ignored, depending on whether you want something or not. In other words, if the Envision Cambridge says, this is really should be what we're going for, but that's not on your list of priorities, then you conveniently don't mention the Envision plan and you just insert uh, what you want. And, by, and it goes the other way as well. You know, if it, if it is on there, the Envision plan, and you want to look, see, the Envision says it. So therefore, we should be we should be striving for that. You know, so in in many many ways, uh, Envision thing, which is really more of a laundry list than a comprehensive plan, quite honestly, uh, is really something that's sort of um, it's 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 like Bible quotation. You quote it when it's convenient, and you ignore it when it's not. You know, and I think that that was a good observation. One thing that the city manager stated 
that I'm going to take issue with. He said that um, when people are talking about the importance of following through on some of the various studies and proposals having to do with Central Square over the years, and I and I do agree with that. I think that you know we've had countless studies. I have many of them listed on my website that um, that we just it's sort of like you know you do a big study. I mean, I've got behind me here. I've got plenty of them. You know, you you make a study, you stick it on a shelf, and you forget about it, right? Um, so the manager said, well, you know, many of the uh, the um, things that are have been proposed, we've actually implemented. And he mentioned two in particular. One was um, bike lanes and um, outdoor dining. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting because having been a part of a number of these Central Square studies, bike lanes actually came a bit later. They're not really a part of the plans. I mean, maybe they were implicit somehow, but you're not going to find a whole lot of uh, text in any of these plans, you know, speaking about the importance of certainly separated bike lanes. That's something that kind of emerged after most of these plans were put together. Right. I don't even know how much that how much play they even got in the K2, C2 uh, studies, uh, which were some of the, the last of the major ones having to do with Central Square, the C2 part of K2, C2. Um, another thing, he, you know, the manager spoke about was how we've managed to get built a lot of outdoor dining in Central Square. And I thought, well, some of that kind of happened because back in the mid 90s, we engineered the widening of the sidewalks to facilitate that. But it didn't really, really happen until COVID. And it was done because you couldn't go inside. And it was really the the um, business improvement, the Central Square bid, the business improvement district that really, really made that happen. So to somehow suggest that the city was somehow man managing to implement plans for Central Square by facilitating outdoor dining is just a complete misreading of what happened. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not trying to rag on the manager here, but I think, you know, to somehow list bike lanes and outdoor dining as as a realization of long-standing plans for Central Square completely misses the point. You know, I mean, the outdoor dining wasn't really done pursuant to the plan, really. You know, maybe some of it was. You know, and, but um, and certainly the bike lanes, which honestly haven't really happened except for the ones that were put together by the bid. You know, so that wasn't really the city. Yeah, you know, I mean the city helped when the bid pushed for it, but it wasn't really the city making it happen. So anyway, so they'll work it out. You know, everybody's learn. Everybody's on a learning curve. I think it's fair to say. All right. So another. Uh, in a thing that happened very recently, actually a week ago, actually more than a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, we had yet another city. There, I mean, the January end of January had the big the big Gaza meeting, you know, where everybody got all worked up. Uh, but um, on February twelfth, um, you know, sort of the the post ceasefire resolution meeting, there were a few things that I thought were um, kind of interesting on that, and it spilled out beyond just the meeting itself. So, for example, one of the items on the agenda from the city manager was a um, a report. It's an annual report um, that on the uh, uh, you know update on the cycling safety ordinance, right? Um, you know, and but the basically what what basically the report said is you know if we're if we're looking at the you know what are the impacts of some of the bike infrastructure on the viability of businesses, especially up in North Mass Ave, really all they had was a lot of anecdotal stuff, not a lot of really good usable data. So the the, the report comes flat right at, right flat out and says, well, this is pretty inconclusive. And it was quite interesting in some blogs and uh, on um, some listservs from various organizations like uh, Safe Streets for All and uh, and versus the you know the the people from the Cambridge Bike Safety Group who were making full use of like forty or more echo chamber commerce in Cambridge Day, each side was 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 drawing conclusions from a report that explicitly said the results are inconclusive. And I thought, boy, is that really what it's come down to in Cambridge? You know, is like you don't even read the report. You you arrive with a set of conclusions. 
and then you basically say that the the study, no matter what the study says, somehow proves your point. You know, and I thought, wow, that's that's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, again, my source of comedy sometimes is, is comes from these city council agendas. Um, another very interesting interchange that happened, you know, sort of, you know, very very interesting interchange is the, there was a an update from the city manager on the new community safety department. Now, you know, I'm glad to see that by next month that they're actually going to be in action and the, the people who have been hired for this, um, you know, for this new department will actually be dealing with a, a certain class of instances that do not, responses that do not require armed police response you know so people in distress but in non lethal sort of situations not dangerous situations you know um but you know we've been seeing now for oh, three and a half years or more is that it have been a big push to have like there was this program that uh, was manufactured called the heart program you know this holistic um emergency something response whatever and you know the the people who put that together and i know i've spoken about this before and written about this before but they they they've always been very upfront about their hostility toward police and policing and i have you know ever since they sort of came on the scene i'm thinking to myself and you want to get a city contract and be paid and you don't want to be accountable to the police department or anything like that right you know, and uh, and and furthermore, you're trying to get a contract by getting elected officials to just blow right past the planning charter restrictions about meddling in the in the awarding of contracts by telling the manager, Mr. Manager, give these people a contract. You know, and I, I've just found the whole uh, phenomenon amazing, but it is it is kind of interesting, I'll say, to be kind listening to Liz Speakman, who's the head of the community safety department, as well as the city manager sort of carefully tiptoeing around the issue without explicitly saying, look, we're dealing with a bunch of yahoos who really are kind of hard to deal with and they can't even submit a budget, you know, because they they really aren't really, I don't think they're up to the task, you know, but they keep saying, oh no, we're community members. Don't you know, you need to support us because we're community members, but it's not so clear that, you know, there are a lot of liability issues and accountability issues and, you know, and the manager is sort of trying to say, look, we've been trying to have a conversation with these folks, really working hard, but somehow it's just not really coming into fruition. You know, so anyway, I, I do find that some something somewhat interesting. Right? Now, in some respects, one of the, the, um, uh, oh, I, I should also say there was one other item I'll mention quickly. You know, after that, the the big Gaza meeting on um, January 29th, there was uh, there was a uh, an order thrown in that was made subject to the charter right uh, by Councilor Siddiqui uh, that uh, basically was raising the issue about whether the city Cambridge City Council should be meddling in foreign affairs at all. Uh, and if so, how would they really approach this in the future? You know, hot on the heels of all of this uh, controversy over, you know, Israel, Gaza, Elbit systems and H. Hewlett Packard contracts and whatever, you know, where a lot of people from outside come in, join in with Cambridge residents to sort of make a big hot issue based on something that Cambridge has absolutely no say in at all. Now, personally, I'll be out right up front and say that I'm not bothered by the fact that the city council occasionally passes some policy order that's, you know, a rah-rah order about overthrowing Muammar Mar Gaddafi. I mean, for me, it's just good, good comedy, honestly, when they do it. But um, and it doesn't do any harm. It doesn't do any good either. You know, uh, when you the, what bothers me is when you've got 500 people showing up disrupting a meeting because they want to talk about something that. Cambridge has nothing to do with. I just think that's stupid, you know, but so anyway, so it was, uh, so I think that's now going to be referred to the government operations to talk about it. In the end, I, I think I can fairly say they're not going to ban foreign policy resolutions. You know, there's, 
there's always a little bit of you know political um, benefit to be had by some counselors by bringing up big national or international matters and you know and and if they have constituents who are insisting they file policy order they're going to want to do it anyway so what's the problem there problem isn't that they do it it's how they do it or as uh, as um, mayor simmons mentioned at the goals meeting he says you know she has, she makes a distinction between the message and the messengers so if you have a message that says you want to call for a ceasefire in gaza that's fine you go ahead ask it maybe they'll vote for it maybe they won't showing up shutting down a meeting threatening people intimidating people in city hall right calling uh, members of the city council supporters of genocide when they're not i'm sorry but that's just a no-go for me no so it's not so much the message or even if you want to do doing foreign policy orders it's it's really how you do it and and you know, and, and intimidation and, uh, um, you know, and, you know, violating every reasonable protocol. I mean, you know, they, they're having meetings talking about city council rules and possible amendments to the rules. If they don't come up with a rule to address this kind of complete idiocy, uh, then they are really uh, not doing their job. So I'm, I certainly hope they, they do something about that. So anyway, so that was one other matter that did come up. Um, Another matter of, of um, uh, well, I mean, there are quite a few, but I, I think maybe what I'll do is sort of concentrate on the, on the sort of the, the big kahuna here, which is uh, that uh, as of January 31st, the Charter Review Committee did in fact deliver uh, its final recommendations uh, about, you know, possible uh, you know, recommendations having to do with modifications to the Cambridge City Charter. So that the first city council meeting for which that was sort of available and on the agenda officially was February 12th. And, you know, and I, and I kind of knew this was going to be interesting. <laughs> you know, obviously they weren't going to get into the minutia and the details about whether, you know, ultimately the city council is going to be leaning more in favor of a strong city manager form of government versus a strong mayor form of government, you know, by the way, any such consideration, if they don't involve a lot of members of the public, which the Charter Review Committee did not do, because it was 100% in Zoom, and it was largely the same characters pretty much every week of the ones who were chiming in, right? Um, but if they don't have a much broader process, um, then I'm going to be, well, I won't just be disappointed, I'm going to be angry, actually. But anyway, um, so the, the report came in with its recommendations, which involved various things like, you know, proposals. I mean, the, the focus currently everybody talks about is manager versus strong mayor. But, you know, there are other proposals in there, such as lowering the voting age to 16, giving not a citizen voting, changing the uh, elections to even years rather than odd years. And I've been assured by them that know that those all three of those are probably dead on arrival if the city council were to include them uh, in a submission to the state house, um, because they have to, there's substantial enough changes in this proposed charter that um, the state house has to chime in. And only after they give their approval, does it come back to Cambridge to be then given to the voters. And I think it would be foolish for the city council to weave into uh, a proposed charter change, various poison pills, that are guaranteed to basically have the state house tell us, see you later, alligator. You know, Somerville went through a bit of a, a process like this as well, as part of their charter review process, which was also happening and facilitated, by the way, by some of the same people, uh, where I think it was Matt McLaughlin got into an argument with one of the other Somerville city councilors who was insisted on having one of these more radical changes. And they, and they you know, and they, it didn't prevail, thankfully, but you know, um, but there's a good reason why you don't put certain things in if it's going to actually ruin your chances at a good change. And there are some good changes that really do need to be made. But anyway, let me just first speak about the political dynamics of this. OK, so Paul Toner is was appointed by Mayor Simmons as chair of the Government Operations Committee. And normally, and so far, I think this is how it plays out, but 
normally a matter such as this, even though it's kind of unique and new because we haven't really done a substantial charter change in long change, but a long time, but even the, the the small modifications that came about a few years ago went first through the government operations committee. So a, a major charter change presumably would go that way as well. But right from the get-go, as soon as this agenda item comes in, you could see the tussling going on. So there are certain city councilors, uh, you know, in particular, Patty Nolan, first and foremost, Burhan Azim and Sambal Siddiqui, and maybe there's another, I don't know. They absolutely do not want this to be uh, controlled by anyone other than themselves. I think that goes specifically for Councilor Nolan, who wants nothing more than to uh, control this process. Uh, I don't think she's made a secret of that, that, by the way. But Paul Toner is the chair of government operations. So there was a proposal to refer the matter initially to not only various city departments, uh, you know, the solicitor's office, the election commission did for some review of some of the technical aspects of the proposals, um, but also then to refer to the government operations for its first phase of review. And it looked like, uh oh, they, they're going to get into a fight. So that's when Mayor Simmons exercised her charter right to delay discussion. So at our next meeting, which I think is this coming Monday, um, the matter will come up about what's the next step in this charter review process. My hope is that, because ultimately I think it probably will go for a larger review in front of the full city council, that hopefully they will take some time with it because it's too important for them to rush it through. And I really, I don't think anybody who knows anything about this who wants just to have nine city councilors debate it internally without the public reacting and having time to react to this and and for the public to be educated about it i think a lot of people if you just sort of say don't you don't you should think we should be electing our own mayor people go yeah that's right and before actually thinking about what that means is abandoning a city managed form of government you know because of some kind of twisted notion about what what's more less or more democratic you know I mean, we elect counselors who hire a manager. I think that's pretty darn democratic, quite honestly. Anyway, um, exactly how this process goes is going to be the political part of this. You know, ultimately, you know, some recommendations will prevail and then we'll go through the process with the state house and then it'll go to the voters. When that happens, I'm not sure. Do they try and rush it through early? Do they try and get it in in times of, for, um, um, you know, an election this fall? Uh, you know, if that's appropriate, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure it is. Should it should it more properly wait till the next municipal election, which would give plenty of time to really discuss this in in great detail and um, you know and, and assess what how people really feel about it. So um, anyway, that was it was it was interesting just to see the initial dynamics amongst our city councilors on the matter. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, there are. So I did mention three aspects of this. So, and I've probably said it before, but I think it's important to say it and emphasize it some more. Certainly it's the city manager versus strong mayor issue. That's probably the big kahuna there. Um, the three issues about voting age, non-citizen voting or changing to even your elections. And again, I'll make no bones about it. I'm opposed to all three of those. And not just because there were poison pills. I just think they're not good ideas. One of the more, in, oh, one of the small matter that I've sort of been a proponent for is to give the election commission a little itty bitty more uh, flexibility in how they do the the mechanics of the election. Right now, that you have to you know, only be restricted to use certain methods that were available in the country in the year 1938. And that's ridiculous. So, but you know, you would need to have a home rule petition to change it, but you can just roll it right into the charter change and then you can take care of that along with the charter change. So if they fail to do that, then they are negligent. So I think that that's something they should do. And again, they're not basic, they're not really deciding the, what, what change should be in terms of elections, but giving the election commission a little more flexibility to make to good choices. One of the other matters of uh, some significance in the 
proposals has to do with what they call citizen assemblies. Now, I have to actually go read, make sure I know what the, the specifics of what their final recommendations were, uh, because they were still debating it all. And honestly, their last meeting in January was a bit of a shit show. Uh, where there's this one absolutely problematic member of the committee just insisted on trying to dominate discussion, you know, and have her way. Uh, and so I don't actually know for sure what, what, what I have to look at that. But what was what was proposed was to have a mechanism of these citizen assemblies that would be created or appointed by the mayor, maybe, or the city councilor, or somehow to take up certain issues or whatever. I don't think that's how it ought to happen. What I would propose, and I honestly, I proposed it to the damn Charter Review Committee a year ago, more than a year ago, was to have something that I liken to sort of like a farm team for, you know, like you have a, for baseball, you know, where uh, an environment where you can actually cultivate, cultivate civic activity and civic involvement candidates might actually grow out of the process, but it was something like a revitalization of the idea of ward committees. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly ward committees as such, but you know, if you actually had people who could run for a ward committee, and I don't mean just Democratic city committee or Republican city committee, but an actual ward committee that didn't have any binding authority over much of anything, but it was a mechanism through which citizens within a ward or so they could meet mutually, several wards together could sort of come up with ideas, you know, that are kind of bubbling up from the people of the city. They could then um, present ideas before the Cambridge City Council, maybe even require them to chime in and vote on proposals, you know, but you're actually getting a, a much broader level of civic involvement in a way that matters. You know, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a buy, they're not, you're not creating a second, making it a bicameral legislature again, but you're, but just to actually do something more like that, you know, uh, that's the type of thing I would be happy to be serve on a ward committee. You know, I think it would be a great thing, you know, and, uh, you know, and work mutually with other ward committees to do things like that. So, so anyway, I, I hope that the city council can, in its wisdom, uh, sort of work this out and come up with a, 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 some ideas that everybody can be happy with on this. So, so anyway, um, so, Anyway, we're about to wind down here. So I'll just sort of say that coming up in the coming weeks, there are a few finance committee meetings uh, that you may be interested in. Another government operations committee this week to sort of, again, follow up on some of the rules. I guess next week, the rules. So anyway, um, so stay involved, be involved, and um, we'll see you again soon on Cambridge Inside Out.